Investing in a computer monitor that is sharp, color accurate, and calibrated properly will make a huge difference in the work you put out. As a photographer, it's so important when I edit photos that my colors are accurate. This way, I know my photos are displayed the way I intended across all devices and social media. Hey guys, it's Stefano Lombardo here and I just received the new BenQ PD2700U monitor I ordered last week. In this video, I'm gonna explain why investing in a proper monitor is important for photographers, video editors, and creators. I'm also gonna explain why I chose this monitor as well as talk about some specs that make this monitor the best bang for your buck. And if you find this video useful, consider liking and subscribing for more content like this. You probably clicked on this video because you're planning on buying a new monitor. When it comes to photo and video, color accuracy plays a huge role and overall can affect the viewer's experience and emotion toward your content. To understand this a little better, here's an example. Let's say you bought a cheap office monitor that isn't color accurate and it happens to have a slight green tint to it that you didn't know of. When editing, you try to get those tones and colors looking as natural as possible, so you bring up the magenta because the photo is looking too green. But what happens when you transfer that photo to your phone or you post the photo to social media? You realize that it looks completely different than it did in Lightroom and it has a huge magenta cast to the photo, completely throwing off your white balance. And to be honest, you probably nailed the white balance right out of camera, but your monitor is telling you otherwise. Before purchasing this monitor, I had a 32 inch from Acer, but instead of using it, it was stored in my closet for over a year. At the time, I didn't know about color accuracy and why it was important until I began editing on it. I would spend hours editing photos just to send them to my phone and it looked completely different. I remember having to go back to the computer, make further adjustments that looked horrible just so it looked good when I saw it on my phone. I was better off using my Razer laptop with no monitor to do everything. At least it was 100% sRGB accurate and calibrated from the factory. I never had this problem on the Razer. Every photo that I edited would appear the same across all devices, but after months of working on a 15 inch laptop, I realized how badly I needed a bigger display. And because the display on my Razer was so good, I needed to find a monitor that was similar to my laptop or better preferably better. After looking at a handful of monitors, the BenQ was the only one I kept coming back to. Let's talk specs. When I was looking for a monitor, there were only a few things that I was interested in. How accurate are the colors? Is the monitor calibrated? Can I close my laptop off to the side and completely rely on it to be my main monitor? With this monitor, I can. The monitor covers 100% of both the Rec. 709 and the sRGB color spaces. When it comes to color depth, it features a 10-bit panel that displays over 1.07 billion colors with a delta value of three. So whether I'm editing photos or videos, I know my colors are gonna be accurate. This is significantly better than the majority of monitors out there, most featuring an 8-bit panel and only displaying 16.7 million colors. The monitor is 27 inches, which I think is the perfect size and has an aspect ratio of 16 by nine, the golden standard of aspect ratios. It's LED backlit and uses an IPS panel, which is great for viewing at different angles. This is a 4K monitor, not 1080, not 2K, but 4K with 350 nits of brightness. And let me tell you what a difference it makes watching and editing videos in 4K. Now you might be thinking only 350 nits, but to be honest, I think that's more than enough in my situation and I haven't found myself going past 75% brightness. It has a refresh rate of 60 Hertz and a response time of five milliseconds. I probably should have mentioned that if you're looking for a gaming monitor, this is not it. You can game on it with no issues like I am here, even at 4K resolution, you're just not gonna get that 144 Hertz. I didn't buy this for gaming, so 60 Hertz is more than enough for photo and video editing. The monitor is also equipped with flicker-free technology that eliminates flickering at different brightness levels, reducing eye fatigue. You've probably never noticed it, but most LCD screens flicker so fast that they actually do damage to your eyes. With that out of the way, let's talk about picture modes. I really like the fact that this monitor has eight different picture modes already calibrated from the factory. These picture modes are Rec. 709, HDR, sRGB, CAD, animation, low blue light, darkroom, and user, which is your own user profile that you can adjust. But if you're a photographer, videographer, or editor, the most important ones will be Rec. 709, HDR, sRGB, low blue light, and darkroom. Rec. 709 is a standard color space when it comes to HDTV. Editing a video on Rec. 709 picture mode will give you an accurate representation 
indication of what the video will look like on that color space. sRGB, which is a standard color space for devices like phones and monitors, also the color space for the web and social media. It's so important to have accurate colors and to have a calibrated picture mode like this directly from the factory. Set your picture mode to sRGB and however your photo appears on Lightroom after editing, that's how it will appear on any device and social media. You don't have to worry about going back and forth from your computer to your phone to make sure that the photo turned out right. It has HDR10 giving you an overall better image with punchy colors, shadows and highlights. This is great for watching movies or even gaming, basically adding contrast while still preserving details in the shadows and highlights. Low blue light mode, which filters a harmful blue light from screens to reduce eye strain. This is super important for someone like me because I usually do a lot of work at night and some tasks like browsing the web or scripting these YouTube videos. It doesn't matter if I'm in the sRGB or HDR mode. Dark mode is a picture mode that adjusts the screen's brightness and contrast for better clarity and detail in those shadow or dark areas of your image. So if you want to fine tune any adjustments in the dark areas of your image, you can do that using the dark room mode. Let's talk about the monitor's design. I really like the look of this monitor. It has an ultra thin bezel giving you an almost edge to edge display. The inside border is actually part of the screen and I think by adding a second monitor or changing your resolution, you can actually get rid of that border completely if you want to have a seamless multi-screen setup. I haven't tested it yet so don't quote me on it. On the bottom, you might have noticed this little thing or this sensor. This is the brightness intelligence sensor. It detects the ambient light and adjusts the brightness automatically, but also adapts the brightness and enhances dark areas on your display without overexposing the bright areas. This will give you a balanced image at any brightness to reduce strain on your eyes. The stand or base of the monitor actually really surprised me. It's very heavy duty and literally won't move when you set it down on the desk. The stand is pretty big, so if you're working on a small desk, you might need a bigger one or you can always get a monitor arm because this monitor does have a vase amount. For size comparison, the stand is about the size of a 13 inch MacBook and it's easy to set up with only one screw attaching it together. Many cheap monitors have a fixed stand allowing for no movement, but with this you can tilt, swivel, pivot and adjust the height of your monitor. Having the ability to make these adjustments means you can really fine tune the position of this monitor for better ergonomics. The screen has a matte finish with an anti-glare coating. For audio, it has two built-in speakers and a headphone jack. The built-in speakers aren't the loudest, but it's better than having nothing like some other monitors. Personally, when I edit videos, I wear headphones anyway, but for watching YouTube videos and browsing Google, these speakers are perfect. For ports, the monitor has one HDMI port, one display port, one mini display port, a display out port, two USB type B ports, and four USB 3.1 ports. The monitor has daisy chain technology if you wanna connect multiple displays, allowing you to connect a cable from one display to the other without having to connect multiple cables into your computer. It also has a KVM switch, which allows you to control two different computers with one monitor and the same keyboard and mouse, which is pretty freaking awesome. So should you buy this monitor? Well, if you're a photographer, video editor, artist, or anything like that, yes, you should. If you care about color accuracy and how your work is presented, then yes. Being able to see at the time of creating or editing exactly how my photo, video, or artwork will appear to the viewer is super important. This monitor is priced at $499 or $599 if you're in Canada. If you're on a budget and you wanna save yourself $100, you can look at the BenQ 2705Q. It's 2K, which is still really good, but only features an 8-bit panel instead of 10. But for a price difference of only $100, I would highly recommend going with the PD2700U because you are getting your money's worth. For me, this is actually a cheap investment when you consider the price of lenses and other photography gear. If this monitor lasts me five years, then I'm technically only paying $100 a year to own this, which is cheaper than a Photoshop and Lightroom subscription. With that being said, I'm interested to know how important you think monitors are for creators and what monitor you are currently using. If you enjoyed the video or you found it helpful, make sure you hit that like button, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when I post a new video. Peace.